Hi, this is Dr. Centeno, and today I'd like to talk about how stem cells are involved with muscle atrophy. Most patients don't understand that if you're having a hard time recovering from an orthopedic injury, it could be because of muscle atrophy. In the shoulder, for instance, if you've got muscle atrophy on MRI or fatty infiltration of the muscle, you're much less likely to recover from surgery for a rotator cuff tear. And in the low back, they don't realize that if you've got chronic back pain, there's a very good chance you've got severe or significant muscle atrophy on your MRI of the stabilizing muscles of the back. So this muscle atrophy thing is a really big deal. Now, there's some recent research that can tell us about how this happens and in fact, how it happens at a cellular level involving stem cells. And the article is quite complex, but I'm going to boil it down here to just a few minutes. So basically, within your muscles, you have these fibroadipogenic progenitors. They're kind of like mini stem cells, if you will, and they have a switch on them. And if the switch is turned one way, those cells become normal muscle. But if the switch is turned the other way, those cells can turn into fat or scar tissue. So interesting that this tends to mirror what we see in patients who get muscle atrophy. And the question is, what causes that switch to flip? So if we look at the article, the article has got some very wonderfully drawn but pretty complex diagrams. So I'm going to boil all that down for you. So basically what happens is that you have these FAP cells and stem cells and those stems, those muscle stem cells talk back and forth to the FAP cells via IL-6. And IL-4 turns bad macrophages into good macrophages and helps the FAP cells turn into normal muscle. But if you inhibit IL-4, you end up getting the fatty or scarred muscle, which is muscle atrophy and not good for recovery. So for all practical purposes, what happens? If your FAP cells are exposed to steroid shots, for instance, that inhibit IL-4, or just a patient who has impaired insulin sensitivity, chronic inflammation, and metabolic syndrome, then you get fatty atrophy or scarring atrophy of the muscles. On the other hand, if you've got a patient who has good insulin sensitivity, who exercises and controls their inflammation, and they express normal levels of IL-4, you'll get normal muscle. So the upshot is, as many other studies show, metabolic syndrome, which is weight gain, inactivity, high blood pressure, high triglycerides, and prediabetes, wrecks havoc on all of our cells and dramatically decreases our lifespan and our quality of life. But in particular, it causes these problems and it makes this muscle atrophy much worse at a cellular level. So what's interesting to think about is that since bone marrow concentrate, but not fat stem cells, are rich in hematopoietic stem cells, and these can replace muscle stem cells based on other research, it's not unreasonable to think that perhaps those kinds of injections into muscle could help muscle atrophy in patients without metabolic syndrome. And perhaps that's why we see some of the things we see. For instance, some of the research showing that if you inject bone marrow concentrate into healing rotator cuff muscles, that you have half the retear rate after surgery. Could it be that what you're really doing is treating that muscle atrophy that allows so many patients to get retears? And that allows so and causes so many patients to be quite miserable for such a long time. Well, that's it. Thanks for watching, and uh, always happy to take a very complex issue and try to boil it down into something simple.